Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I want to start off with a question. What mini do you buy if you want one that packs a punch and also ticks all of the boxes? The obvious answer would be a Cooper S. However, they do demand a premium. The insurance grouping is higher. The running costs in terms of fuel and road tax is also higher. On the other spectrum, you can opt for the diesels and they are excellent with running costs, but they do somewhat lack in terms of displacement and noise. So, where to go next? Well, I think I have an exciting proposition for you and it is this, the F56 Mini Cooper. This particular car has been lent to me by my partner and she has named this Daphne. But what makes this exactly so special? Well, this particular car has the B38 underneath the bonnet, which is a 1.5 litre turbocharged three cylinder engine. Um, it doesn't really sound like much, but I once had a courtesy car, which was a Toyota Igo as one litre microscopic thing. Um, um, I remember fondly of it because it, it was so gutless, but it meant you had to really maximize every gear change. And it was so rewarding and so fun to drive because of that. But it wasn't dangerous because it wasn't very fast. But does the same apply to this Mini Cooper? Well, let's find out. Well, it's definitely quick off the mark, but it most certainly runs out of puff past 30 miles per hour. This particular car has the B38, which is a turbocharged 1.5 litre three cylinder engine, produces around 136 horsepower, has around 220 new meters of torque, and gets about the 0 to 60 sprint in around 7.9 seconds or so. The power is just about enough for these UK roads. It could do with a little bit more. The initial kick down gives it enough shove for ample overtaking and before it starts to run out of steam. Speaking of kick down, this particular car has the six speed automatic transmission and it is great, probably it helps this car in terms of its performance with this 1.5 litre petrol engine. The only thing I can really note about it is that it's not particularly the most happiest in lower town speeds. It can be a bit uh, eager uh, to get going, it's very, it seems to be like a little slightest bit of throttle movement. It is very eager to go and it's maybe a little bit jerky, not the smoothest, but it is adequate for the most part. Another thing to consider though, is that because we have the 1.5 litre three cylinder engine over its front axle, it's a lot more lively around the bends. If I remember correctly, I was, when I was driving a Cooper S F56, this feels a lot more encouraging around the corners around the bends and I think it is because it has the smaller engine and that I feel is why it handles better. If you do feel short change in terms of performance, and I have heard on the forums, you could do a simple ECDU tune to this car and it will bring it to around 180 horsepower, which is nearly Cooper S territory. And then if you factor in the weight saving with the engine, then it should be going nearly toe to toe with its bigger Cooper S brother. In terms of sounds, well, it's gonna be a very divided opinion. I do like the sound of four cylinders, but I really do like the character of this particular three cylinder and the Toyota Igo. I like the, how much of a raucous engine note it had when you did push it on. Whereas in this as well, I, I do feel the same. I love how beefy it sounds. It's very zesty and beefy. Even if you start up on a cold start, it's relatively quite audible, all things considered. I just think it's got a lot more character as well as opposed to the four cylinder you get in the Cooper S. I know in the Cooper S on the overrun you get a lot of pops and bangs from the exhaust which I do find is, is very addictive when I used to have one. I found that very entertaining. Um, but don't just think that this car doesn't have anything up its sleeve because if you put your foot down on this every gear change and every time you let off the accelerator it has like a little f I can't really explain it it's a bit of like a flap out of the exhaust. It, it sounds really great. And 
also if you do let off the accelerator or as you are accelerating you hear like lovely turbo spooling up which i know you're getting a cooper s as well but at least you are given something when you are in the cooper model as well but that mainly does happen when you're in sport plus mode so if i am just cruising along like i am now and then i suddenly just go i want to put my foot down so right now It might be hard to hear in the car, but I can assure you there is noise every time you change gear. And if you are then accelerating and let off violently, as let's say for example now, you get a nice little flap out of the exhaust as well. It's a very, very interesting noise, but I, I, it, it gives you something as well. If you don't opt for the Cooper S, you can at least have these noises in the lesser model like this. Just as a warning though, if you are looking to buy one of these, um, they just start adding particulate filters in their cars post 2018 or 2019, and they are a lot more muted, well, both the Cooper and the Cooper S, for example. So if you want one with noise, and I advise you to get one probably 2017 or a bit older than that, and you will get these brilliant noises that these car makes. In terms of running costs, well, uh, this car, falls into the insurance bracket of 18e or it might differ depending which year you go for um, in this particular car 2017 or ones under i think it's around 18e and it might increase to 19e beyond so yeah it is a very big talking point because it also means the road tax changes as well because i think the emissions changed so if you get a car which is pre maybe like 2016, 2015 or 2014, the road tax is 20 pounds. However, if you get one that's 2017 onwards, it's 190 pounds, which is exactly the same as the Cooper S. So that is something to bear in mind if that's a deal breaker to you. Hopefully it's not, um, but yeah, 20 pounds is the road tax from 2014 to 2016 and beyond there's 190 pounds. Obviously with well, running costs um, to buy the car, it is a bit cheaper than the Cooper S, but I've noticed that there isn't really a big difference in terms of their ask and price. Like the minis do hold residuals quite well, but there's not really a big difference or big jump between both models. That is something to also consider. Now onto my favorite bit, uh, fuel economy. I am very into fuel economy and this car is a bit of a mixed bag really because this owner uh, has quite an exuberant pedal movement and it spends most of its time driving just around town and she likes to drive this with a bit of flamboyance and because of that the mpg does suffer and the average mpg that i recorded before i started taking this out on longer journeys was 30 miles per gallon which is quite eye-watering for a car in terms of how microscopic this engine is let's get some turbo noises down here See what I mean by the turbo noises? They are very addictive. It's probably why she gets such bad fuel economy. That being said, when I have driven this on a longer run, a 50 mile round trip, 25 miles there, 25 miles back, wasn't really trying, did about 70 miles per hour on cruise control. Um, I didn't even put it in green mode, I left it in normal mode. And it was comfortably doing 45 miles per gallon. Um, and if you are a bit more careful with the throttle, let's per se, you could probably average around 50 miles per gallon especially if you do maybe like 65 miles per hour i'm yet to test that i want to do future videos with fuel economy in this car to see if it makes a difference because i am really into that sort of stuff but yeah if you are commuting with this car 70 miles per hour in a dual carriageway you can easily expect mid 40s in terms of miles per gallon Right, in terms of its negatives, well, it has got quite a few. And one of the things about minis is that options, loads of options on these cars, um, and it's quite expensive. Obviously, you are already paying for a premium brand, obviously, because it's a sister company of BMW. So you, kind of, you would expect maybe a bit more for your money, but not necessarily the case. There are a lot of options on these minis so to speak i can look around this car and i can see loads already such as this screen in the middle um, that is an option because i can remember on the standard mini you just have like a little thin strip i don't know if that changed in the newer models the, where my elbow is right now an armrest that is an option the led headlights they are also an option that's a very nice three liter coupe z4 there sorry i'm getting distracted but yeah we've also got a heated windscreen as well 
that is also an option obviously yes climate control that is also an option i believe this does also have the john cooper works uh, body kit on it which obviously is an option that is so yeah yeah some to factor in there there's a lot of things on this car which you have to spec which is options and it obviously that does bring the price up obviously this is now an outgoing model so you can't spec these anymore but it will demand premium if you are looking for a car it will be much priced higher because it's got so many options probably put on them so if you want a car which is littered with them um, to suit your needs then it's something to consider when buying one as for other negatives well i think the brakes are a bit too grabby especially around lower speeds they're very eager such as the gearbox as well that is also eager and it's not the smoothest in the world speaking of smoothest um this three cylinder engine is, is quite a grumpy and lumpy engine i think a lot of three cylinders suffer with this but it definitely is rough and especially in town speeds it's not at its happiest when you are driving and pushing on though obviously that does disappear but something to keep in mind of is that when you are on lower town speeds it is a bit of a grumpy engine Another negative to note is also the aforementioned road tax. Yes, if you are in the market of one of these, make sure you get one. If you want to pay £20, make sure you get one between 2014 to 2016, as I believe. 2017 onwards, like I said, you will be paying the £190. It is a bit of a bitter pill to swallow because the Cooper S is also £190. Other things to note, well, I did mention that the speed is probably just about enough for UK roads, but it does run out of puff quite quickly, but that can of course be fixed with a simple ECU tune. The way it rides on the road, it is a little bit firm, and I don't think it helps with these 18 inch wheels and the run flats it's on, so it probably is a bit of over exaggerated in terms of how it rides. So if you are into a bit more ride comfort, maybe opt for the 17 inch and most definitely don't get run flats. I'm not an advocate for them, but I understand why people do choose them. And just one more thing to note is probably is that it's a bit noisy at speed in this car, but that probably, like I said, is over exaggerated with the run flats. So what are my final thoughts? Well, I don't think you go wrong with either choice. However, the Cooper variant is a very exciting proposition that is hard to ignore. With its characterful three-cylinder engine note, its lower road tax, it's better on fuel. You can almost get Cooper S performance with it if you just do a simple ECU tune, it sounds better. It's somewhat lighter with its smaller engine and because of that, I think it handles slightly better too and it is just basically cheaper to run. On the other hand, the Cooper S does look a lot better. Um, of course, you do get some pops and bangs out of the exhaust, which does sound good. And the two litre is a much more refined engine and might suit your needs better. And if you don't want to tune this car and you just want the relative ease of the Cooper S, it's slow down torque and everyday use is really useful for everyday driving scenarios. Then of course, if you factor in the the noise in the over and the coup breast of the, the cracks and exhaust, that is brilliant. And the price difference isn't really substantial. And then the road tax 2017 onwards is about the same. So there's definitely a case to be made for either car. So I'd love to know your thoughts down in the comments on which you choose and why. Well, everyone, I hope this has given you some sort of insight on which you should buy in terms of the Mini Cooper variant or the Cooper S. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, bye for now. Sport mode.